Twisted Little Lies, or Nightmare Student, whatever the hell the movie wants to be called, is a lifetime movie about a disturbed student who becomes obsessed with his teacher. Oh, not again. The movie was written by the two actresses that star in the movie who apparently think they can write, they can't, and directed by a guy who, right before this movie, directed C.I. Ape about a talking monkey that saves the world. Okay then. Now I know what you're thinking. It's gonna suck. And you're right. We start off with our main character, Bree. Hey, bitch. Who meets her boyfriend, Nick, at his restaurant, and the son of a bitch proposes. That's a yes? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> While in a back room, Nick bumps into Christina, a bartender that he banged months ago while him and Bree were on a break. For some reason. We cut to a college classroom where a student named Cooper is reading an essay to his class about how his parents died. And I crawled right into her arms and I asked, when are mommy and daddy gonna be home? And she said, they're gone. Okay. What college has you read your paper out loud in front of the entire class, especially in a large lecture hall setting like this? None of his peers give a shit, but his teacher is extremely moved and has this to say. That essay was so raw. Yeah. Hmm. We find out that Cooper lives with his sister, Christina. Yes, this Christina. <laughs> While the two fold laundry, because that's a normal thing for siblings to do together, he tells her about his great new teacher. At school, Cooper gets a girl's number and decides to text his sister about it on his drive home. So now he's in the hospital where we're told he suffered a brain injury. What? You wouldn't know it by looking at him. There's not a cut on his head, no bump. At least wrap it with gauze. Do something to make it look like he had a head injury. Or was gauze too expensive for this movie? Yes. His teacher, Bree, comes to see him at the hospital, which is borderline inappropriate. Why wouldn't this guy develop feelings for you? You're at his bedside bringing him homemade cookies. But surely she's not going to do anything else to lead him on. You know, I, I don't normally give out my number to students, but under these circumstances, here. Bree waits at home for Nick, who was supposed to be home for dinner. He says he's held up at the restaurant because things got crazy and he'll be home soon. Nick is at work, but he's really there consoling Christina, who's still shaken up by her brother's accident. Christina kisses him right as Bree walks in. Bree, please wait. It's not what it looks like. No, because to me it looks like my fiance kissing another woman. Okay, Nick's clearly a cheater, but why are there no people in this restaurant? It's supposed to be dinner time. Bree was waiting at home for Nick to come home and eat dinner. I get that the filmmakers probably had to shoot after hours at this location when there weren't any customers and for budget reasons didn't want to fill the restaurant with background actors, but then go into the back office where we can't tell that the restaurant is completely empty at a time when it shouldn't be. Oh, good call, good call, okay. Cooper goes to see Bree at her office, now with a black eye because a bully punched him in the face, but she's not there. He sees a photo of her and Nick on the desk, well aware that this is the guy his sister has been trying to get with and wants to end their relationship for good. Nick and Bree, not Nick and his sister. Yeah, we got it, man. Cooper steals his sister's cell phone while she's sleeping on the couch. Meanwhile, Nick begs for Bree to take him back and she does. Yay. Nick randomly puts his phone down right there and leaves the room because that's the only way this scene will work and Cooper shows up with his sister's phone and sends Nick an incriminating text pretending to be her. How does Bree not see him standing right there? Bree calls Nick a lying cheater and gives back the engagement ring. We're done. Bree, please. Bree, don't do this. Bree, not like this. At the restaurant, where there's once again no customers whatsoever, Nick yells at Christina for sending him that text message. I didn't send any text like that. I'm warning you, back off! And that's how that ends. Cooper creates a fake profile on the popular social media website social.usa. What the f*** is that? Under the name William Anderson. He finds Bree and clicks on her profile. Look at this shitty ass website. What did they make this in? Microsoft Word? Also, her date of birth is 1986. Yeah, okay. She's 35. I'm not buying it. 
Bond. That actually is the actress's birthday, except 1979, not 1986. Nice try. Anyway, Cooper sends her a friend request and spends the next 10 minutes of the movie developing an intimate online relationship with her under a false identity. But this plotline ends up going nowhere, so I'm not even gonna talk about it any further. Thank God. Oh, and then there's this scene where Cooper tells his sister that he hates living with her. Then you can just leave. You can just leave. Leave! Hey! Get away! Get away! I don't need you! I don't need you! Just, just go! 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 Do you hear me? God, I don't need you anymore! Um... Christina goes to stay with a girlfriend for a few days while her brother calms down. Cooper meets with Bree to talk about his writing. He asks her for a ride home, and when they get there, he asks her to walk him inside because ever since his car accident, he's been getting extremely dizzy. Even though that happened like weeks ago and he's been walking around campus every day just fine. But she believes him because she's an idiot. Once inside, he offers her a glass of water and just so happens to have some drug ready to go in the kitchen that will make her pass out. Duh. Bree swallows the tiniest of baby sips, and of course, that's all it takes in a movie like this to knock her completely out. Well, uh, yeah. She wakes up the next morning in Cooper's bed. I have to report this, you know. You say what, that you slept with your student and did God knows what with them all night long? I'll... No, 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 you're not gonna say anything to anybody. You're gonna play nice, or else I'm gonna have to report you. You're sick. That night, Christina comes home, and Cooper apologizes for what happened. Sorry, I'm really sorry. I was really stressed out. Stressed out? Leave! <laughs> Go! And now everything is fine between them. During Bree's next English class, this happens. Excuse me, Professor Scott. These came for you. <laughs> Look, I know the purpose of this scene is to show how Cooper's harassment is now crossing over into Bree's work life, but can the screenwriter, which is her, at least make it believable? This would never happen. A TA would never walk in and interrupt a professor right in the middle of a lecture to deliver flowers and a gift box. Like, never. Um, I'll be right back, okay? Just uh, feel free to do some reading while I step out. Bree leaves her class, that's right, stops her class and goes to her office just to see who they're from. She knows they're from Cooper. Why wouldn't she just put them down, continue teaching, and then find out who they were from later? Why don't you stop asking questions you know the answers to? Gee, I wonder who that's from. Cooper, of course. And he gifts her with a nice pair of women's panties. Classy. Days later, Bree calls Cooper to her office to set him straight. My life, my friendships are none of your business. You're my student. That's it. You got it? I thought about calling your sister, but based on what you've told me about her, I doubt she would do anything to fix the problem anyway. Don't talk to my sister. I thought we had an understanding. It's your word against mine. And my word is the truth. Nothing happened between us. Now, does this look like nothing happened between us? Yeah, it does. In fact, you're just helping prove her story. If she tells the police you drugged her and she woke up in your bed, that's exactly what that photo looks like. Look at her, she's not even conscious. So now Cooper is bent out of shape that Bree wants nothing to do with him and devises a plan to get revenge. It starts by recruiting Stephanie, the girl that gave him her number earlier and who likes him. He tells her that their teacher, Professor Scott, keeps threatening to fail him for no reason and that she needs to be taught a lesson. Bree meets with Nick at his restaurant and confesses everything that's been going on with her student harassing her. Cooper and Stephanie meet at the school at seven o'clock for whatever it is they're doing and he picks the lock with the credit card. Okay. As you can see, the next door clearly requires some sort of access card to open, but these two just walk right in. Why wouldn't that door be locked too? Bree fixes herself up in the restaurant bathroom and leaves her phone behind. Good God. Just as Christina exits the stall after taking what I assume was a massive dump. She sees a text on Bree's phone from Cooper with that salacious photo. Why does his icon photo look like it was taken during the same photo shoot as this photo? There's the couch 
It's the same exact lighting, and he's clearly not wearing a shirt. Why did Brie even take the time to create a custom icon for the student who's harassing her? Is this movie even trying? No. In the restaurant kitchen, which should be filled with cooks because it's 7 p.m. on a weeknight but is instead completely empty, Christina storms out with Brie's phone. What did you do to my brother? She then gets another text from him saying to come to the college or else something bad will happen to Stephanie. Wait, where are you going? It's Cooper. What? He's the student I was telling you about. Your Cooper? Apparently it's her brother. Small world, huh? <laughs> Bree and Nick race to the college because they think that girl Stephanie is in danger, yet they don't call the police. It's blocked! Cooper! 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 How would a professor not have access to her own building after hours? Do you ever stop asking questions? And oh great, Christina is there too. They all split up to check different parts of the building, hoping to get inside. And that's when this happens. You really thought that was Brie? I know she had her back to you and was wearing a sweatshirt, but come on! Their body types aren't even close to being the same. At a door, Brie and Nick plead with Stephanie to come outside. They find Christina's body and Cooper holds the scissors to Brie's throat. I had no buddy until I met you. Brie gets out of it. <laughs> rather easily, and Nick steps in only to get punched in the face. <laughs> Cooper picks up the scissors and is now going to stab Nick. Where did she get that fire extinguisher? They're in a courtyard next to a fountain. There wouldn't be a fire extinguisher out there. That means she would have had to run all the way back to the building and go inside, which she can't because she's locked out, remember, in order to grab one. All in like seven seconds. So how does she magically now have one? Why couldn't they have her pick up a rock or a trash can? Something that might actually be found in that area. But a fucking fire extinguisher? It makes no sense. Cooper is arrested, his sister is dead, and the movie ends with him in a mental hospital being videotaped taking his medicine. Now Cooper, how do you feel? What the hell did that mean? Eh, who cares?